use video in every part of my business. For sales, I do video conferences. For content, I make YouTube videos. If you didn't know that, you can check them out, youtube.com slash tricycle creative. For training, I do video screen shares and walkthroughs. And for coaching, I record videos for my courses. Video is all up in my business. And there's a reason for that. People love video. And if you don't believe me, here are some stats otherwise. 97% of consumers and online marketers report that video helps consumers understand their product. 93% of marketers say they've landed a new customer thanks to a video on social media. And according to LinkedIn data, videos are shared 20 times more often than any other types of content in the LinkedIn feed. And it's for all those reasons that I welcome Elsevina to Tripod. Perhaps like you, Elsevina is a former deer in headlights when it comes to making videos and speaking in public. She was so terrified to record her first video that she actually just walked straight out of the room. Maybe you can relate to that. Over time, she has found an effective method on how to get comfortable on camera and make a real connection with your audience. As a confidence trainer, she has created the Confidence Creation Framework, a proven method with exercises for body, mind, and energy. She also recently published a book, Get Comfortable on Camera, that you can pick up on Amazon. We're diving into why video is so important for your business. We're also gonna be talking about tips for people who are not confident on camera. We'll discuss her pirate technique of doing live video. And if you somehow think that involves a parrot, an eye patch, and a peg leg, well, I'm sorry to say that you would be wrong. And finally, we're going to be myth busting that you need fancy, expensive equipment to get started with video. So, without further ado, let's get pedaling. You're listening to Tripod, a podcast produced by Tricycle Creative to help safely navigate creative business owners through the worlds of digital marketing, strategic content creation, and business growth. Host Ross Erosion is a marketing consultant, content creator, and entrepreneur who brings you helpful tips, social media updates, inspiring interviews, and his own unique perspective on how to tell your story and grow your business. So if you're interested in being a better marketer, business owner, or creator, sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. So today we're talking all about video. Now, yeah, this is an audio podcast, but you can, you know, radio and audio, the whole theater of the mind, we're going to be dropping all kinds of awesomeness when it comes to video, video marketing, and how you can be doing video, more video. Everyone wants more video right now. So my guest today, Elswine Reitveld. Is that, did, I, did I pronounce that correct? Um, did I butcher it? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, so, go ahead. A lot of people say it like that. So I'm, I listen to it. It's quite used to that as well. But here in the Netherlands, we say Elsevina. Oh, that's so much nicer. That has a whole much better fluency than the way I pronounced it. Like I, I find that most languages have a certain... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a musical aspect to them, you know? So I just missed the musical cue on that. Okay. So, um, and you have your own company and a book now, which we'll get to a little later, but get comfortable on camera. Yes. So do you want to talk a little bit just about what you do and, uh, what get comfortable on camera is all about? Yeah, sure. So for me, it started as a journey of not feeling comfortable of speaking to groups. So when people are listening and feeling like, oh, I always feel insecure or uncomfortable when I stand in front of a group of people and everybody's looking at me, I totally can relate to that because I've been there as a student. I was like really scared when I stood in front of the whole class suddenly. And I started doing more with that, starting a training of myself. So I got more used to it. I did a debating training. I, start, I joined the debating club as a student. So I trained my skill a little bit, but inside I still felt uncomfortable. I was really nervous the day before and during, but I got used to it more, you know. So over time it got better. And even though I wasn't really comfortable, I could manage. 
But then at some point I was like, hmm, let's record an online course, set up a video camera, because that's much easier. And I like the idea of selling not one-to-one -one or one-to-one -one group, but just a course that you can sell to many. And just standing there in the room, I had bought two lights and I had set up the camera. And suddenly it felt like I was right back there in front of that classroom. And not even that, it felt like amplified as if 10,000 people would be watching me. It wasn't necessarily the people, it was the function, right? It was just the nature of what you were doing, just speaking conceivably in front of people, whether they were there or not. And you still had that little bit of that anxiety. Yeah, and I imagined all the people who would be watching. It felt like, oh, 10,000 people will be watching. Of course, they wouldn't, but it felt like 10,000 people. So not only 90 pairs of eyes were staring at me, but like 900 or 9,000 pairs of eyes were staring at me. And I got so scared, in fact, that I didn't even press record, but I walked out of the room. I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. And I know many people feel like that, right? They are like, no way am I going to do video or when they make a little bit of video. No way. I'm, I'm going to look gonna stupid. I'm going to look dumb. I'm nervous. Yeah, absolutely. And understandably so. It's a very common thing that I experience in conversations I have with creative business owners where so many of them are brilliant subject matter experts, right? And they have so much great knowledge to share with prospective clients, with the world at large. There's so much good that they could be putting out with that knowledge. And I think the big thing that stops them is just like that, what you talked about, that anxiety that just hits the brakes on them doing video. Exactly. And this is exactly the point why I wrote this book. And my vision for the book is that over 10,000 professionals will get it and especially read it and implement the tools so that their subject, that they're passionate about, that they're very good at, that they can bring that out into the world, that they can share tips, that they can attract clients, that they can help a lot of people with their inspiration and knowledge. So it can create sort of like a ripple effect or a snowball effect of positive change. So that is my vision behind the book that I wrote. Because over time, when I was so super scared of the camera, that's about eight years ago, so I didn't stay that way. I found a way to get more comfortable on camera. And then when you have some tools to work with that, it's also a matter of doing it a lot. And I made a lot of mistakes. So in my Well, book, that's I good. You made the mistakes. So the people yeah. who get your book can look, can they themselves can learn from that, right? They almost get the advantage of the mistakes that you've made. I got to tell you, if you're a listener of this podcast, I have also made a lot of mistakes and you get the benefit. And I've been through a lot. You get that benefit because I like to share that with you. My biggest thing of, of even starting my own agency is working with these creative business owners like I do. So many of them, they don't even know where to go. And if they do, they maybe make mistakes. And I got to tell you, if you can provide a solution to help people to, you know, not make that mistake or to know something they wish they knew three months ago, six months ago, a year ago. There were times when I first started and continually through my path as an entrepreneur where I hear something and I learn something and I'm like, damn, I'm so glad I know that, but ah, I wish I knew it six months ago, but I know it now. So that's good. So let's talk about video. Why is it so important that creative business owners, entrepreneurs make videos for their businesses? Yeah, it's really super important because it helps people to really get to know you, like you and trust you. Or as I call it in my book, know, love, trust. So you want people to really know who you are as an entrepreneur, as a creative. You are the person behind the business. It's not some big corporation where you just, you maybe have uh, an assignment and you don't know who is going to show up. As a business owner, you are the person that people have contact with. So you want people to know you and not just from a picture and some text. You want them to know how you sound, how you speak, your accent, how you move, your micro expressions. And actually, some people will not like it. You're not for them. And that is fine. And this will actually save you time and money because let's say you put great content out there and people think, well, that's interesting. I will book a discovery call with this person. And in that call, you are speaking to them, maybe on the phone, but preferably on video. 
And then they decide like, ah, they're not for me. And it's such a waste of time for them and for you. I think that's the thing that a lot of creative business owners also get hung up on, right? And why they always are like, oh, you know, like constantly they come to me as a marketing agency and it's kind of like, oh, who are you, who are you marketing to? It's like everyone. It's like, oh God, not the everyone answer. Please God, not the everyone answer. Like you can't be for everyone. I do, since I have particularly started coaching, people buy, when you buy a coaching program, you just as much buy into the coach as you do the program. And so I know there are some people that I'm not going to be their jam. And that's okay because what that creates, if you don't recognize that, if you don't identify that, if you don't almost like sift that out, it creates tension when you bring them on. If you're not a good fit, that tension is going to exist throughout that whole relationship. Yeah, it is indeed. If they would sign up with you without really knowing you or they decide they won't be working with you after an initial call or whatever. So it's really good for discerning between those who are not your people and of course also people who are falling in love with you in a professional kind of way. And the cool thing is, I regularly see a video on LinkedIn and like, oh, you know, this person is so cool. I really like them. Oh, they do copywriting. I don't need copywriting services right now, but I see someone who posts about that. And then I say, hey, check out this person. They share really great content. I like their videos. Check them out. So I almost thought it was me until she said copywriting, but I, I almost thought. Almost for a second, thought she was talking about me. No, I, and I think the other thing I would ask you is, you mentioned talking about um, a, that's a discovery call. And you mentioned doing video. Do you recommend video inside of a sales cycle, not just for content? Yeah, definitely. So there, one side of the video as a business owner is that I think you should have a video on your website. So people who find you through Google or whatever resource land on your website and they see a short video of you and they get a feeling of who you are. You talk about why you do what you do, your passion and the right people will resonate with that. You will share videos on social media and people will see that come by and they get to know you more and they get to trust you because of the content that you share and you become literally a familiar face. And then there are the people who have either a service or maybe a course. And if you have an information page about that, it's really good to have a video on there as well, specifically on the results of that service or that course that you are offering because you can tell so much more in the video, like they say, a picture says more than a thousand words and a video is a moving picture, right? It tells like so- a million words. It's so incredibly powerful. And that's why it's still like a, the top format consumed, right? And, and I will say this, it also is because video can now be distributed and created in so many different ways. You know, you look at short form social video, you look at uh, stories, Instagram stories, you look at Instagram, sure. You look at TikTok, you look at YouTube, you know, all of these are kind of almost like different ways to package up video. Let's rewind it all the way back. All of this sounds great, but what if you're still that person that you described at the beginning? I'm not confident on camera. What's your best tip for someone when they're not confident on camera? Yeah. It is to start small, so forget about the courses and the big videos everywhere. It really helps to start to think about short topics that you can share. Tip videos are easy because we talked about it, like you're a subject matter expert. You know your topic inside and out. So if you want to start, take your phone or your computer and then find the lens of the device that you have. Look through the lens as if... Your best friend or your ideal client is sitting across from you. And that is just one person that you're talking to. Forget everybody else. You're just speaking to one person and share a tip. Keep it really short. So you don't go off on a tangent or forgot what you're going to say. Or just even really have to edit that, it, right? Because I think that's right. the other thing that, that people get intimidated by is, ah, uh, I don't know how to edit either. And a lot of really great tools out there. I think you and I could probably spend an entire podcast. Yeah, that's such a good point, actually. So two things on that. Some people go really into overthinking. So they record and re-record and re-record. I hear people like 15 times or 20 times. And you know what they say? I shared the first take. 
every time again. So I said to them, okay, so from now on, what do you do? You forget about the 14 others. Unless there's really something like the doorbells ringing or you really forgot like halfway through, what was I saying? Or what, I need this word or something. Then you can do the second take and post that. So one thing that can help some people is just to record, post and don't even look back. I just use my camera app on my phone. It has a video function. I press record, I press stop and then I upload the video. And you can keep it super short. So I just saw someone in the comments said, yeah, I wanted to post a 37 minute video on LinkedIn. And I was, oh, bless. First of all, LinkedIn only allows you 10 minutes. But nobody has the time to watch a 37 minute video. We are all so busy. I mean, I do some long videos, but my, my long videos on my YouTube channel People are coming in and they know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, in, like for example, I'll do like a review video, and and when I'm breaking down something five different ways, someone's coming in and they know that's they're they're invested in it. They're searching for it, right? You're right. You don't have to, nor probably should you start at the 30. I need to make a 37 minute, right? You can literally make a video under a minute. And that can start to give you some of that confidence. And it is just like anything else in life. You're not going to nail it immediately. Or if you are, maybe you're gifted at it, which is awesome, right? But more often than not, the things that you do that make you uncomfortable, that you've never done before, you have to do them a bunch of times. It's like going to the gym. When you first go to the gym, you got to lift the little pink weights, you know? It's a little embarrassing maybe, right? But you got to start there. Exactly. Or I compare it with like running. You don't buy running shoes and go outside around the block once and then expect to do a marathon the next day, right? You need to train and you get better at it. So, and that is why I also say like make short videos, think of some topics, maybe some places outside you like. It's like, hey guys, I'm outside here. I wanted to show my favorite berries or like this tree where I go apple picking or like this animal or like this view. Your environment is, sounds freaking awesome. I would do a video there outside with berries and apples in Texas. It's like, let me go outside and show you how I'm going to melt uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> into the sidewalk. <laughs> but I get it. No, but, but to your point, those things can allow someone to connect to you in, in a very meaningful way. Even when you're melting, yeah. People relate, or maybe you have an animal, you're with your dog, and you're like, oh, I'm very early because it's too hot later on. And people relate with that. It's really quickly. So I live in a small town in the Netherlands, and we actually have 1,100 species of apples that were planted throughout. My husband looked this up, and there is at some point they're all ripe and then he has this little map and says like oh i want to try these and then you can they're on the open road so you can just go and pick some and some are really not good <laughs> i'm gonna get your town name and i'm adding it to my travel shortlist because being in texas we moved here from the northeast every fall my wife and i would go like to an orchard and go apple picking and I love doing it. It was all like, dude, the air was crisp. It was a little chilly. You know, you maybe had to get a little like, you know, apple cider or coffee or something. It was just such a great activity. I could talk about apple picking. Again, subject for another podcast. Let's move from recorded or produced videos to live video. I will say this, weirdly enough, live video might be easier for some people because of what you were talking about. If you get obsessed, if you let perfection get in the way of production live video it can be very stressful but it can eliminate that because like you know what it's live we're just rolling now you have a very special technique and i believe it's called the pirate technique and i'm so curious about this can you talk about explain the pirate technique of doing live video absolutely and you are so on point here ross that is really really Good. So I work with two types of people. So some people, like you say, are like, oh, as long as it's live, I'm fine. There's interaction. I know there are people there and I know there is no way back. So I just roll with it and I go with it. But when I have to record, I'm just, it's me in the room and I freeze up and I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. So I help them with that. And a good tip for that, actually, that helped so many people is to think about it's just a time delay. So you are recording and there's a time delay before people watching. So that helped a lot of people who are in that mindset of life is easier. And I'm one of those people who 
feared pressing record on a recorded video and couldn't even fathom thinking about like live video no way that is out of this universe never gonna happen in the meanwhile in the past years i've done tons of live videos and i now love them when people are listening they could recognize themselves in one of these two types like oh life is super easy but i don't know about recorded or yeah i don't know about recorded but i'm never ever going <laughs> going live so if you're thinking that, and this is actually a chapter in my book that I wrote about it, it's the pirate technique. And it's not about eye patches or the hook or even channeling your um, own Pirates of the Caribbean uh, favorite character to, uh, to do. No, it's an acronym actually of six steps that are important to do or to, to, that can help to make it easier to go live. So the P stands for prepare. So you prepare as good as you can your equipment, like you have your phone on mute when you're recording on your computer, you have everything else off, you make sure the cat is downstairs or the dog and it's not barking, your lights are good, you check your background, you check if the sound working beforehand, so you're not recording live and everybody's like, what, what, what? So you prepare the topic that you want to talk about. You maybe write down like three or four bullet points, like today I'm talking about orchards and what kind of apples there are and what kind of things you can do with the apples well you make some notes you're the subject matter expert that's all you need that's okay for the preparation so the i stands for interaction it's super important to interact with your audience when you're live otherwise why don't you just record the video I've been on a Facebook live where someone was just talking and talking and said, well, I'm not going to look at the comments because that's not convenient for me. Or they were just ignoring and people were engaging and asking questions and nothing happened with it. I will say this. It is where doing live video, it adds an extra layer of complexity because I do think it's important for sure. The interactivity of a live video, is kind of part of the big reason why you would do live. Right. And if you, if you really feel it's not your thing or you're not ready for it, don't do live or have someone with you to collect the questions and ask them to you, find a way around it. But if you are doing a live, I think there should be an interactive element in it. And I will come on the timing part in the T, but let's first quickly look at the R. So if you are, for example, on um, a Facebook live or you use StreamYard, it is one of the things you can do, you see the comments come up. So what you do is you, the R stands for read. But generally, I'm against reading because you know your topic, you know what you're talking about. I didn't prepare today. I'm not reading this from a script. But if a question comes up, that is someone else's text and you read that. So you say, Ross has a question about background of your video. And he says, would outside make a good background for my videos? I always tell people also to make eye contact with the camera when they speak to people. But when you read, you look away, you read the comment, you say the name of the person, you read the comment, and then you look back into the camera and then you answer the question. This is because, especially when there are more people there, comments go by really quickly. So when you say, Ross, good question, you're totally right. This is the best way to do it. Everybody's like, what, what, what was his, what did he say? What did she mean? I think there's a certain amount of acknowledgement there, right? Yeah. And people know what it is about. And also people usually on a live, some people watch it on a replay and they also won't know otherwise, what are we talking about? So that is why you read the question fully and then you answer it. And preferably you re also read the name of the person. Um, so they feel addressed as well. So the A stands for ask questions. So you also want to prompt them to engage with you or to think about it. But, um, well, let's say you're talking about apples or orchards. You could ask like, do you have an orchard in your town? Or did you ever make an apple pie from apples you picked yourself? These can be simple yes, no response, call and response type questions too, right? These can just be very simple prompts. Yeah, absolutely. Or like, I used to be super scared to speak to an audience. Do you have this too? Or do you recognize this? Let me know in the comments if you ever had this trouble. Or what, what do you find scarier, speaking to an audience or speaking on camera? And then people type camera or audience and you have some, and you know, because you engage them that way. So you don't have to ask questions all the time. It's like, raise your hand if this, raise your hand if that. It's, it's like some speakers do it too much. But if you do, 
a half hour or hour live, prepare some questions or when you've noticed you're speaking about a topic like, oh, let's ask like, what do you find scarier? A live audience or the camera? Let me know. And then you continue. It probably comes as no surprise to you that Instagram is the favorite social media platform among creative business owners. Instagram also continues to find new and interesting ways for small businesses to generate revenue, promote their products, their service, their expertise. But Instagram does have a major limitation, external links. They won't work in your captions and you can only use them in stories if you have a large follower count. Sure, they give you link in bio, but that's just one link. Problem solved with solo.to. Solo.to is one bio link for everything. When you create a solo.to account, you can showcase tons of links for your business. And if you're a creator like me, you can even embed music, videos, and podcasts right there on Instagram from your favorite platforms. Want to see solo.to in action? Head on over to Tricycle Creative's Instagram account at Hello Tricycle and click the link in our bio. Solo.to offers a free plan to get you started and you can upgrade for as little as $1 a month. Use the referral link in this episode's description and in the show notes and you can save 10% off any upgrade package within 48 hours of signing up. Solo.to. It's one bio link for everything. So now we're at the T for timing. There are two elements for this. First is you are in charge of the timing. So if you want to talk about the subject for a little bit, it's totally okay to say, I'm going to focus now. I'm going to, to explain to you the pirate technique and then I will answer your questions. Because some people are talking, they see a question pop up and oh, mid-sentence, especially when they say, well, what's really important to do is, oh, Bob, there's a question about this and this. And you're like, what was really important to do? And yet they forget, they go off in a different direction and they totally forget to mention it. So don't answer the question the second it pops up, just finish up. And the second element to timing is, especially when you're on Facebook, there is a time delay. So very often I see like we have three topics. I'm on the th first topic and I say, any more questions about this? Or otherwise I will move on to topic number two. And then I wait a little bit, maybe eight seconds, 10 seconds. Nobody? Okay, well, here is topic number two and a pop, pop, pop. There's the <laughs> questions yeah, popping up yeah. because of the time delay of 25 seconds. It's <laughs> counterintuitive, right? It's like, oh, this is live, but it's, it, it's live and there is a delay that you have to kind of factor in a little bit. So it's best to say like, I'm going to wrap this up in like a minute or two. So if you have questions, put them in now because very soon I will shift over to the next topic. And then you have something to talk about and you're not sitting and wait like any questions because maybe no questions are coming, but that feels a little bit odd. And also when you move to topic two and there's like five questions popping up around the topic one. So have that timing element ready and the final step is the e is expected to go wrong not from a place of doom not from oh it will really it will certainly go wrong here but to be flexible and to prepare for any anything can happen you know the simple thing a dog barking or the postman ringing but i've been on a live where a part of the ceiling came down where kids were stung by a bee or like the backdrop came down or a cat Cat jumped. <laughs> I come from a media video production background working at a media company. And some of those were live. Some of them were pre-recorded. But, you know, I think the plan, what you always do is you try to plan as much as you can. And you do try to think a little bit. And this, this comes with time. Um, you try to think a little bit of, okay, if something like this happens, what am I going to do? You know, and, you know, I, I think that's also just this expect something to go wrong is just the rule of live anything, video, radio, anything. If you're doing something live, expect it to expect something to go a little off. Right. And that's just the nature of it. Yeah. And then you won't be thrown off balance or 
like taken off guard by that. So I always say acknowledge what happens and then find the solution. So we, we try, like I said, the P is prepare. So you, you try to avoid unnecessary <laughs> things going wrong. And then when something does, just acknowledge it. Like when uh, one time I was there and I had the cat scratching the door and really like mewing super loudly. Cats are a top culprit of live broadcasts going wrong. Let me just throw that out there. And the one thing I will say also about this, when you do something live, people who aren't used to it, when something like that happens, they tend to get a little rattled and then they spend too much time on it. And the reality is of live, like acknowledge it, move on. Just move on. Because the longer you spend on it, you're going to get thrown off your game. And chances are, there's, there's a good chance that the viewers or listeners may not have even really noticed it. I think that's a big step of just kind of like acknowledge, move on. If you can move on like or find a solution, like now I have my headphones in, but let's say I don't have it. I'm recording live. And of course, suddenly the neighbors start drilling. So that's a super loud noise. Don't be like, oh, maybe they don't notice. Just keep the elephant in the room and just keep going. I don't know if you know that there's this clip of a guy and I think he's like this news news anchor and he was reading something and in the back, the door opens and his child is in. Yeah. And he was just going on like, maybe they don't see it. And he kept talking and then his wife was like, and he, Wrestling and he was just the like, kid. yeah, and he yeah. was like, oh, I'm seeing something. But if I just go keep going on, if he would just have said, hey, oh my God, you know, yeah. we're working from home and now my kid is really curious. Let's take him here. Like, And even when we were now with COVID, everyone was working ha- at home with the lockdowns so of pets and kids. But even before that, you know, so many people have kids so they can imagine the kid doing something like that. So if you just acknowledge like, hey, there's my kid, come on here, let's call your mom to take you out of the room and let's continue. Let's move on. So acknowledge and move on, absolutely. I think once people get past, once they can get past the nervousness hump, right? And they start to jump in, the next thing that stops them is, oh, I need to buy an expensive fancy camera, right? Um, whereas what they're probably have in their pocket is an amazing device shoots HD for many people on either camera, right? What is your opinion on that? Do you need fancy equipment to get started? Absolutely not. So when I started eight years ago, we had this handy cam that we had got for the kids and the pets. And I think it was five years old at the time. And I started making videos with that. So I actually borrowed a tripod. So that is something that I would advise people to invest in. A tripod, because it's super handy. You also have click on thing for your phone. I think it's called a mount or, well, there's different names for it. But um, also ask around. So many people have a tripod and don't use it a lot. So I borrowed a tripod. We had this camera and it was sort of like this handy cam thing already. But looking now at the quality of the phones, I always say, like, start with what you have. People ask about lighting. Do I need to invest in things? It depends on your house. So I did. I bought two umbrella lights. They were $35 because the way I was filming, I only had the window, like, in a position that I I could not get the lighting right in that room. So I needed to... And I think, so let me, let me also clarify this, right? My question really was about, do you need fancy equipment? And I think maybe more appropriately, the question is, do I need expensive equipment? And the answer 100% is no. I love that you mentioned, yes, a tripod. And if you're out there and you're thinking about this and all you have is a phone, Joby, J-O-B-Y, make some amazing tripods for your phone. They make what's called a gorilla pod. You can like move it all around. It comes with mounts attached to it. It's not complicated at all. I love, I have about a million of their products all around my, <laughs> my house and being a you know former videographer mounting stuff with them. So J-O-B-Y, Joby, they make some great things. And even to your point about lighting, yes, you can get some light and additional lighting does not have to be expensive. Like you can get some, what you just mentioned, these umbrella lights, you can get one or two for probably under 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, like 30, I think $30. And even then first look around in your house. So the one, I didn't have one that I could position right. And I had one that was too bright. I looked very pale. First look 
around the angle that you're filming. So if you can make a video where you face the window and you don't want to film or record in the evenings, then you just can use the natural light from outside and you don't need anything. Look around what you have in your house, what you can use. I bought these umbrella lights eight years ago, 30 or 35 dollars. And I still use them. I'm actually using them now. <laughs> mine too. I mean, mine, mine were really inexpensive. I have some that are more expensive, but I opted to do that. I didn't have to go that direction. The other thing I will say, and this is where when you're first getting started, a phone is great because it takes care of this audio. In a lot of ways, the new phones just do a great job of actually having pretty good microphones on them. But I will say this, you know, nothing can ruin, and this may surprise some people to hear this, but like nothing ruins a great video faster than bad audio, right? So this is where a phone can help you with this because think about it, like you could have the most beautiful video or whatever, but if you can't understand what people are saying, you're going to be like, I don't, I'm not going to watch this. This is, this is pointless. So getting started with what you have is fantastic advice. And again, oftentimes so many people have an iPhone or an Android or whatever phone you have. Camera is great. The microphones are definitely, you know, good. You're still going to want to try to do what you can to be in a quiet space, that kind of thing, do, to, to, to control what you can of the environment. But you do not need to break the bank to get started. This has been an awesome discussion about video. Where can people find you? Where can people get your book? Fire away. Yeah, so the book is called Get Comfortable on Camera and you can find it in the Amazon store. It's uh, as a Kindle version and um, if you have this Kindle subscription it's included or it's like one or two dollars to, uh, to read on Kindle. And there's a paperback version too that you can order. I also have uh, a book website getcomfortableoncamerabook.com All the links to the book, to her profile, to all that stuff going to be in the show notes tripodpodcast.com. It's been a blast having you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really hoping that this will result in more people doing video. And if and when you do, please remember, tag Tricycle Creative if you're putting it out there on Instagram. We're at pretty much Hello Tricycle everywhere. And as you may or may not know, I'm at Ross Hero. So tag us, let us know. Let me know that, you know, hey, I listened to the podcast and made my first video. I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Me too. Thanks for listening to Tripod. Be sure to subscribe and rate the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. For show notes and past episodes, go to tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on social media at Hello Tricycle and learn more about how we can help you with your marketing at tricycle-creative.com.